Now let's start coding in Scratch. When you start Scratch, you'll get a screen like this one. We have given names to each of these areas. The blocks on the block area are dragged and dropped into the program area, also known as the script area. Each type of block has a distinctive color. At the bottom we have the stage, which can have different backdrops. And here we have the sprites, which are the characters that you can program to tell them what to do. To run a program, you'll click the green flag or double-click the script. You can resize the execution area by pressing the arrow that appears on the bottom right of the area. Now let's try out different blocks in Scratch to get a better idea. Try to drag and drop the Move 10 Steps block into the program area and double-click it. The cat will move in the direction it is currently facing. You can change the amount of steps. Try for instance typing 100 and double-click it to try it out. We can also tell the cat to bounce if it hits the edge of the screen. To do this, simply drag the If on Edge Bounce block and put it under the previous block, like this. Try running it by double-clicking it to see what it does. If you don't want the cat to turn upside down when it bounces, press over the I on Sprite 1. Try selecting different styles of rotation and run the program. Now, let's change the cat's colour. Go to the Looks palette, take a Change Color Effect by 25 block and connect it to the previous block, placing it right underneath. Double-click the code stack to run the program. Every time the cat moves, it changes color. To be more precise, whenever we run the program, the cat first moves and then changes color, executing our code from top to bottom. This program runs very fast, so we can't see the order of execution with a naked eye. If you would like to observe more closely the sequence of execution, you can introduce a wait one second block from the control palette and place it between the two other blocks. When you run it this time, there is a one second pause between the cat moving and changing colour. Now let's remove the wait block to continue with our script. We'll now get the cat to meow. Introduce a play sound block from the sound palette, setting it to meow, and place it right underneath your stack of code. Double click the stack to run the program. The cat now meows, great! Another way to run a program is by pressing the green flag which is on the top right of the execution area. To do this, you'll have to add the When Green Flag Clicked block, which is at the Events palette. To run the program, press the green flag. <coughs> We're going to be creating many different programs in this course, so it's important to give them representative names. Every project can be saved, so you can work on it later. This is very useful, as you may come up with new ideas to extend and improve your programs. If you're working on the offline version, go to File and Save. If you're working on the online version and are logged in, the program is saved automatically with the name you gave it. If you're working online anonymously and want to save your project, go to File and Download to your computer. It will ask you where to download the file and what name to give it. Note that Scratch files end in .sb2. If you named your project First Example, it will be saved as firstexample.sb2 in the folder you selected. In the previous version of Scratch, the files end in .sb, but no worries. Files that were created in the previous Scratch version can be used in this version too. If you want to work on your project again later on, you can simply open the file when working offline or upload from your computer when working online anonymously. Well done, you've created your first computer program. Let's keep trying out Scratch.